Half a month after the incident at Corellia Fortress, a sense of lingering unease still hung over the Empire. The government increased patrols by the Railway Military Police as part of their counter-terrorism measures. While the noble faction bolstered their provincial armies, there were even rumors that they'd hired several Jaeger corps. At the center of everything was the Imperial Liberation Front. They had allied with a terrorist group from the Republic of Calvert to attack the Trade Conference in Crossbell. And as we'd seen firsthand, had attacked Corellia Fortress in an attempt to fire the two railway guns stationed there. They'd made it abundantly clear that they were no mere insurgents. These were dangerous people we were dealing with. And following their attempts to target Chancellor Osborne and the reformist faction, rumors started to spread of a possible connection between the Imperial Liberation Front and the noble faction itself. Meanwhile, new information was filtering in from Crossbell that surprised us all. During the conference, one of the representatives of Crossbell's state government made the daring declaration that Crossbell would soon declare its independence, breaking free from its neighbors Calvert and Erebonia. To no one's surprise, both the imperial government and the noble faction dismissed it as nothing more than delusional raving. But one thing was clear, that declaration only served to increase the tension in Erebonia and across the continent. On a cool, clear autumn day, the Academy's prestigious board of directors gathered for their first meeting of the year. And that concludes my biannual report. Good, good. It seems the Academy is running like a well-oiled machine. No administrative issues to speak of. Student performance is sitting comfortably above the national average on exams and on general aptitude tests, too. The second-year students seem to be having a banner year as well. The student council president in particular has built up an outstanding array of extracurricular achievements. <laughs> Well, she attended last month's trade conference, and from what I hear, she put the professional secretaries to shame. I only wish the conference could have ended on a more... positive note. I'll say, the share prices of my company have been on a real roller coaster ride ever since. Undoubtedly, what happened at the trade conference has wreaked havoc on the economy as a whole. But moving on. I couldn't help but notice in the recent exam reports that Class 1 and 2's academic performance seems to be slipping. Perhaps the preferential treatment given to the upper-class students is hindering their scholastic development? Well, students belonging to the nobility are allowed to return home during August to learn more about their family's lands. It's a tradition here, but one I can't help but wonder if we've outgrown the need for in this modern age. If I may, Traditions accumulate and hold meaning only so long as they're preserved. Our nation's culture, its arts, its social classes, all are rich with tradition that makes Erebonia what it is. And I believe we have a duty to protect and uphold them. After all, does not this very institution champion the ideals of its founder, Emperor Dreykels? Indeed it does. Though I've always understood Dreykel's intent to be the founding of an academy for the people. Even 200 years ago, when education was seen as the province of the nobility, male commoners were permitted to enroll. Today, we have plenty of young women attending, 
and the commoners easily outnumber the nobles on campus. Perhaps it's time we started taking strides to realize Emperor Dreykel's true ideal. You seem to be laboring under a few misconceptions here. Commoners were permitted to attend, but only as retainers. Retainers served knights, who served lords, who served the emperor. That's the way the Erebonian society functioned. From that vantage, the structure of the academy in its earlier days certainly seems to have embodied that social order. And if that's so, what is there to suggest that it's not the social order itself that has become the aberration? Well... For one, if that were the case, it would be far easier for me to see my views put into practice. But I can hardly get a word in edgewise between you two. Well, I'd certainly enjoy a return to the way things were in Dreykel's time, at least in that particular respect. <laughs> our apologies, Your Highness. Well, our role here is to consider your views and work toward implementing them. <sighs> See what I mean? Would you be so kind as to help me out here, Principal? I'm here to moderate this board. It wouldn't do for me to express my position on the issues at hand. That said, I'm sure your passion for reform will triumph in the end, Your Highness. I suppose I should have known better than to look to my old teacher for sympathy. <laughs> it warms my heart to see such a fine teacher-student relationship. Now, if I may, I'd like to steer this discussion toward a rather timely topic. We've already touched on the issues regarding the Orbal Net and the Orbal Staves, but... I'd like to stress again that the adoption of new security measures for the Orbal Net should be a top priority. Well, I'm certainly inclined to agree. But we'll have to rely on the Foundation directly, as things are looking a little shaky with the IBC. You can leave that to me. The other matter I'd like to review is the use of the Orbal Staves and the Arcus Units. Or more specifically, we need to talk about how Class 7 should operate from here on out. Mm. Mm. Setting aside the fact that my daughter is a member of Class 7, I think we need to reconsider how the class should be run, in light of what happened at Gorelia Fortress. While it certainly proved an excellent chance to see what the Arcus units are capable of, I have serious doubts about whether we should carry on with these field studies, given the current political climate. It would be difficult to do so, I admit. With the terrorists at large and the problems in Crossbell unresolved, these are uncertain times. At the very least, I believe it may be in the class's best interest to cancel this month's field study. We could always resume them once the terrorists have been arrested and the situation in Crossbell calms down. Hmm. Hmm. Arise, O youth, and become the foundation of the world. I'm sure you all recognize the words of Emperor Dreykel's. They become something of a school motto here. It's my belief that Class 7's actions at Gorelia Fortress perfectly embody the spirit of that directive. They stood together to stop a tragedy in the making and, in a sense, protected the foundation of our world. No one ordered them to do it. They took action of their own free will because they knew in their hearts what was right. Some might call it recklessness. Some may think it rash, some may even venture to call it hubris. However, as chairman of this academy, I'm incredibly proud of what the brave young men and women of Class 7 achieved. Your Highness. Huh. <clears throat> Troubled times may lay in store for Erebonia, and for the entire continent in the months and years to come. But I believe that makes something like Class 7's field studies all the more significant. The experiences they're having now will help them find the strength and the means to press on through adversity. I can't be the only one who feels this way, can I? They do seem to be showing remarkable growth. That much is true. Although I have no idea how much my daughter is really capable of, immature as she is. <laughs> I could say the same of my hothead of a son. I do wonder about my brother sometimes. However, it does seem that enrolling at this academy has helped him start breaking out of his shell.
With the Academy Festival coming next month, we hadn't even planned a field study. So the issue at hand is just whether to hold a field study at the end of this month or not. I'd like to ask those in favor of going ahead with this month's field study to please raise their hands. All right, I'd like to begin by taking everyone's ideas for our class's part in the school festival. The festival will run for two days next month, the 23rd and the 24th. Equipment setup and the other preparatory work will begin in the afternoon, two days before the start of the festival. But there's a lot of preparation needed before we get to that point, and the sooner we get that underway, the better. That's all the more reason to figure out what exactly we want to do. Some of our options include displays, events, stage shows, and cafes. Does that sound right, Crow? Yeah, though no class I know would settle for just some simple display. I mean, come on, no one ever said, Boy, we better rush to get in the line for that display! Well, either way, I'd like to start by soliciting some ideas from all of you. We're just brainstorming right now, so feel free to say whatever comes to mind. Would it kill you all to give just a teensy bit of cooperation? I know, I know. It's just... It's kind of hard to focus right now. You're one to talk, standing up there with your nervous fidgeting. <sighs> well, I can't say I'm surprised. The board of directors is in session as we speak, deciding what'll happen to our class. And those of us with family members who sit on that board probably have even more cause for concern. <sighs> you can say that again. We can't even be sure whether there'll be a field study this month. That's about the long and short of it. With everything that happened during last month's field study, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if they just canceled it. Hmm. <laughs> I can't say I have any particular feelings of attachment to our field studies. But I refuse to accept needless changes to our curriculum. Especially with my brother involved in the decision-making process. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Makes sense to me. We also have to account for the fact that going on our field study means that much less time to prepare for the festival. So, as you can see, it presents a bit of a problem. Man, look at you guys taking this all seriously. Um... I probably should have asked a little earlier, but... What's this festival you guys keep talking about? Wait, seriously? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have gone over that for your benefit. Every year, the students here organize and put on a school-wide festival. There are stage events, food stalls, and all kinds of things to see and do. And it generally falls to each of the first-year classes to provide the main attractions. Yeah, participating is optional for the second years, since by this point they're usually focusing on their future careers. Oh, and each of the clubs generally get involved too. Huh, that sounds fun! In that case, we have to do something! We can't just let the other classes roll over us because we're small! <sighs> you say that, but... I've already had one of the girls from Class 1 bluster up to me declaring that this time victory will be all ours! What? It must have been Ferris. <laughs> that sounds exactly like something she'd say. Well, Class 1 does seem to have had it in for us ever since the midterm results were announced. <sighs> If it's all the same, I'd rather not see the House of High Arms claim yet another nominal victory. 
But we need to account for the fact that our class is markedly smaller than theirs is. Hmm, that's certainly true. <sighs> It'd help if we at least knew what the other classes are doing. It kind of seems like everyone's having trouble staying focused. Come on, everyone, get it together! Instructor Sarah? Uh, isn't this a self-study period? Oh, it was. But I thought you all might like to know that the board of directors meeting just adjourned a few minutes ago. So I decided to skip along down here and be the first to break the news. Then? What about our next field study? Are we still on? <laughs> the Chancellor's not the only one with a little too much iron in his blood. Because the board voted unanimously to have you continue your field studies. You mean it? So that's how it is. You know, even though they're always hard work, I actually feel a little relieved. Considering all that happened last month, we'll need to be especially careful this time around. Still, it feels like our field studies are a big part of who we are as a class. Yeah. They're kind of a pain, but oh well. We should be grateful to His Highness and the directors. <laughs> That's good news! Seeing the hard road and the easy road, then picking the hard one anyway. That's youth for you. <laughs> It also sounded like His Highness and the directors will be taking off in pretty short order. So I'll let you guys out of study hall early to go see them if you want. Oh. If you say so. I think I'll take you up on that.
still, I wasn't expecting to find myself indebted to you again so soon. Without your intervention, the Chancellor and I would have met our Maker in Crossbow. Don't mention it. We just... We're just relieved you're all okay, Your Highness. Indeed. I'm glad you were able to focus on making a positive contribution at the conference. I wish I could tell you that's exactly what I did. I could scarcely find a place to chime in once the Chancellor and the Republic's President got going. Though the Mayor of Crossbell managed to dumbfound even them. I presume you're referring to his proposal for Crossbell's independence? Hard to believe it could actually happen. Well, as long as both Erebonia and Calvert refuse to accept it, the likelihood of it actually happening is incredibly low. Still, they're planning to hold a referendum on the issue to see if the population is in favor of it. So there'll be plenty more chances for disputes to break out over the issue. Well, neither of them want to lose all that sweet tax revenue from Crossbell. Half of it flows into the provinces too, so like, fat chance the noble faction's gonna take that line down. Uh... William... Oh, I swear, this kid has all the delicacy of a rock to the face. <laughs> so you're Milliam, are you? Your name seems to have come up with increasing frequency lately. Well, I was hoping for a chance to see the famous Eric Getlam in action, though. Oh, sure thing. Come on, Lamb! Whoa there, cool your jets. I'm not sure this is the best place to call out Eric Getlam. Just a hunch. Lame. Objection overruled. Ah, oh, that could have gotten... messy. Honestly, it would save us all a lot of trouble if you could just refrain from saying whatever pops into your mind, too. Lame. Oh, who might you be? Say, are you from the Vander family? The one who serves as the Prince's bodyguard? Oh, did Nightheart mention me? I'm Mueller Vander of the 7th Armored Division. I was with the Prince at the conference in Crossbell, so I'm in your debt as well. Glad to be able to thank you personally. The honor is ours, sir. It's an honor to meet a member of the esteemed Vander family. Ah, so you're the Radiant Blade Master's daughter. And you must be a practitioner of the Eight Leaves One Blade style. I'm always happy to meet fellow students of the sword. Oh, and you must be the young man from Nord who my uncle wrote a reference for. Yes, that would be me. I owe a lot to Lieutenant General Vander. It sounds like he's in your debt as well with everything that happened in Nord a few months ago. Well, you all seem like dependable young men and women. <laughs> Perhaps the Prince's idea had some merit to it after all. <laughs> See? What did I tell you? And it's not just Class 7 either. The whole academy seems so full of life. Perhaps I should take this opportunity to break down social barriers by getting to know all of them in the academy's pool. If you really want to work up a sweat, I'd be glad to let you run back to Heimdall. If you kept up a good sprint, I'll bet you could even make it in a couple hours. You'd actually make me do it too. Ah, cruelty. My name is Mueller. It's like their hearts practically beat in sync. That's certainly one way to look at it. I wonder how long they've known each other. <laughs> well then, I bid you all a fond farewell. I hope we have the chance to meet again soon. <laughs>